ocean, over the clouds, and around the world. Here comes the wild side of wildlife. The Animal Show! And now, let's have a wild welcome for your furry friends. Stinky and Jake! Now it's the Animal Show! Hey! Hello there, all you little animals out there. I am Stinky! And I am Jake, and today we'll be... Hey, hey, Jake, where'd you get that cool hat? Oh, well, this is my Bula Bula Club hat. Ooh, can I have a hat like that, too? Well, I'm sorry, Stinky, it's for club members only. <laughs> Today's guests are a Hemsbach and a Moose. Now, a Hemsbach has horns and a Moose has antlers. And you've got a hat. Now, me, I got nothing. Well, so Stinky, I'm sorry, but, you know, to wear one of these hats, you, you have to be a member of the Bula Bula Club. No problem, I'll join the club. Oh, well, I'm afraid it's not that easy. <laughs> Bula Bula ah. has injected hey. Hey, Bula Bula there, brother Jake. Ah. Bula Bula, Bunny and Armstrong! <laughs> Armstrong and Bunny are members? Well, yes. But you forgot about me, Stinky? Well, Stinky, uh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. It's, uh, uh, we'll be right back. St Stinky, I'm really... Stinky! Bula Bula, it's time for... That's amazing! Today we meet the unicorn, a horse with one horn at the top of its head. Hold your horses there. The unicorn is a make-believe animal. That's right, Armstrong, mm. but look. Hey, what do you know? It's a unicorn. That may look like a unicorn, but it's really an animal called a hemsbach. Mm. It's the same size and shape as a horse. And when you see it from the side, it seems to have one horn like a unicorn. Well, I'll be. By hemsbach. Eh, another animal that's not a unicorn, but will still make you say... <gasps> That's amazing! <laughs> oh, Stinky, I'm sorry you're not in our club and don't have a hat, but you're not alone. No, very few of us get to wear the Bula Bula hat. Oh. Well, all right, Jake, I guess it's okay. Bula Bula, Jake. Oh, Bula huh? Bula! <laughs> Eve is a member? Uh, uh, <clears throat> well, well, our first guest comes to us all the way from the savannas and deserts of South Africa. Africa. Uh, here is Dikimba, the Himsbach. Stinky, Jack, it is so good to be here with you. Hi, the Kimby. Oh, hello. Uh, Jack, I did not know that polar bears had horns. Oh. Very nice. No, 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 th these aren't horns. It's a hat. Uh, but I must say, you have magnificent horns. Ah, these horns are part of what makes me a Hemsbach. Take a look. Oh, oh. Yeah, okay. You see, all Hemsbach have great long horns. Yeah, now aren't Hemsbach also known as oryx in some parts of the world? That's right, Jake. And there are many kinds of oryx. The scimitar horned oryx lives in Northern Africa, and the Arabian oryx lives in Oman, and the East African oryx lives in... In East Africa. That's right, Stinky. <laughs> some are bigger, some smaller. Some have different markings on their body. But we Hemsbach are the proudest, for we have the longest horns of all. Well, what do you use your horns for? We will sometimes use them to attack, oh. but only when we are threatened. The first thing we try to do is run away. If we can't, then we use our horns. We kneel on our front legs and put our head down so that we can bring our horns up and into our attacker. Well, can't you just fly away? Fly away? Yeah, the way those Hemsbach are wiggling their ears, looks like you could just fly away. <laughs> that it does, Stinky. But Hemsbach can't fly. But flapping our ears and tails does help us keep away flies, mosquitoes, and other pests. Mm. A Hemsbach can outrun most attackers, but there's no escaping flies and mosquitoes. How true. Mm. Now, Dikimbi, how do you survive in the desert-like area where you live? It's so hot, there, there can't be much food or water. Mm. We use all of our senses to find what we need to survive. Mm. You see, a Hemsbach's ears aren't just good for chasing away flies. We have very sensitive hearing, and we also have a very good sense of smell. But how does hearing help you find water? Well, we Hemsbach can actually use ears and our nose to sense if it's raining somewhere. When we pick up the sound and smell of a rainfall, the whole herd will take off in that direction and travel hundreds of miles if we have to. Well, that's great for finding water, but where do you find enough food? We eat lots of grass, and you can find that almost everywhere. We even eat the roots of plants that are naturally filled with moisture. Well, it seems you know all the tricks for surviving in the desert. Uh, it's very simple, really. Stay in the shade, 
Try not to waste too much energy and eat whatever puts extra water in your body. Well, I bet it would help to wear a hat. Mm-hmm. The stinky wants a hat like mine. Oh, it is a fine hat, especially the horns. Well, they're not real, and I don't imagine they're as useful as your horns. Mm, you'd be surprised. We don't really use them that often, except when we defend ourselves. We knock heads or else we lock horns and twist and pull. We never use the point of our horns to wound another hemsbach. But fights between Hemsbach don't happen often or last very long. In the hot desert sun, we cannot afford to waste energy fighting with each other. Mm, hear that, Stinky? Huh? Let's not waste energy fighting with each other. Well, maybe you're right. Mm. Now can I have a hat? Uh, the, 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 well, it can be. Thanks for showing us what life is like for the Hemsbach. Mm, always a pleasure to talk to other animals, especially one with such a fine hat. Oh. Uh, bye. <laughs> so long. Bye. <laughs> I wish I had a fine hat. Stinky, it'll be all right, because later we're... Uh, huh? You'll see, you'll see. What? Uh, right now... What, Jake? Let's take a look at baby talk. Later what? Settle down now, children. It's chow time, and we're all going to eat this here meal together. You hear? Oh, uh, okay, Mom. I'm going to eat everything on my plate. Uh, except that. <laughs> I'll finish, Mom. Can I be excused? I want a filet. Hmm. Ready? Yeah! Nothing like a good run after lunch. We look at me go. Come on, Mo. What are you waiting for? Oh! Here I go. The room. Yahoo! <laughs> I take it you two don't want any dessert. You know what? I'm kind of hungry. I could use some dessert. Yeah. What is there? Baranches. I don't really like baranches. Do you? Nah, but it's okay, because you know what? I'm still going for lunch. And now it's time for a song. Uh, what's the name of the song? Stinky, look! Huh? Without a hat. What? Nothing. Did you? I heard that. Well, you can talk real tough. Huff and puff. Say you didn't mean it and all. Oh, You can't do that. You can't do any of that. Without a hat, can't do any of that. Without a hat, can't do any of that. Well, you can be real brave, be real bold, overcome the danger just as good as go. But you can't do that. You know you can't do that. Oh, you can't do without a head. Oh, now, Stinky, I wish you wouldn't get so upset. And what would I be upset about? Well, that's easy. You're upset because you don't have a hat. Are you ready for a tougher quiz? We're ready. Then here it is. Which of these animals has horns? The deer, the caribou, the garanook. Give it a think. I'll be back in a buzz. Well, Jake, do you know which one of those animals has hats? I mean, horns. I'm afraid not. We better ask Tizzy. Yeah. And the answer is the Garanook. The Garanook has horns. The deer and the caribou both have antlers. Be seeing you. Here are some more animals with horns. This is a Garanook. Once its horns grow in, they're there for life. Animals with antlers, however, grow a new pair every year. This is a great akudu, another example of a fine pair of horns. They look kind of like corkscrews. Male animals with horns or antlers use them for defense, but mostly in ritualized fights with other males in their own species. And there goes an impala. An impala's horns can grow to be up to two and a half feet long. Horns have a sharp point at the end, whereas antlers are generally more rounded. Do you know what animal this is? Go on, guess. It's an African buffalo. His horns are very thick and close to his head. The horns are fierce-looking, don't you think? 
No wonder the buffaloes use them to scare off enemies. But the African buffalo's horns are not only used for defense. Because they're well supplied with blood vessels, they act as radiators to help overheated animals cool down. Believe it, cause it's true! You know, Stinky, if you'll just be patient, everything's gonna be just fine. Well, that's easy for you to say, Jake, because you've got a hat. Oh. What do I have? Besides good looks, personality, and an irresistible aroma. <laughs> and speaking of irresistible aromas, let's get cooking with Yves Saint Laroche. Bonjour, bonjour, mes petits animals. Today, I will show you how to cook in a hat. Now, when you are cooking in a hat, you need one thing above all else. <clears throat> a hat. <laughs> Follow me. And here is a hat. Hat. And now my beautiful assistant, Bunny. Bunny? Will put in the ingredients. Ingredients? And what have we got? Oh, we've got a beautiful spaghetti. Spaghetti? Into the hat it goes. What else have you got? Oh, beautiful crisp lettuce. Lettuce? Lettuce. Oh, lovely and crisp and fresh. What else have you got? Oh, look, we have some eggs. Egg, egg. Oh, this lovely runny egg. I like mm. that. And then we mix and mix and mix and mix her. In Australia, you mix the other way. That is absolutely right. And voila, you have a meal in a hat. Taste it, Evie Weevy. <gasps> wow, bunny, it is delicious. Well done. Thanks, Eve. <laughs> So remember, never eat a hat full of food, unless, of course, you have a head of lettuce. <laughs> you know, Stinky, not everybody has a hat. The Hemsbach didn't. But he had horns. And our second guest doesn't have a hat either. I bet you he has horns, too. No, he has antlers. Same thing. Uh-uh. No, mm -hmm. it's not, as we will find out. From North America, America. here is Ralph the Moose. I'm sorry there. Oops, a daisy coming through. Wide alone. <laughs> hey, Ralph, nice hat. Yeah, uh, no, it's not a hat. No, no siri bob. These are antlers. Well, tell us, Ralph, what's the difference between antlers and horns? I'm glad you asked. Now, see there, those are moose. I'd know them anywhere. In late summer, the male moose will grow a new set of antlers every year. Well, doesn't the female moose grow antlers? No, they don't, just the male. And that's the big difference between antlers and horns. What happens to the old antlers? Oh, they just fall off, or they get knocked off. But that's OK, because when the new set of antlers grow in, they're bigger than ever. So the bigger a moose's antlers, the older the moose, right? That's right, Jake. There's no use that big fella in the back lying about his age. You can tell by his antlers that he's been around a while. Looks like it's starting to get cold. Yeah, and those moose are eating all they can to get ready for the winter. That's a tough time for moose, because it's hard to find leaves and grass. Uh, that's what we eat. We must eat a lot to get that big. <laughs> we certainly do. More than 20 pounds of food a day. And in winter, we sometimes can't find that much food. We get weak, and we're easy prey for wolves and bears. Bears? I'd never! Oh, I know you wouldn't, Jake, but some bears would. Uh, but don't worry. When the weather gets warm and we get enough food, no one messes with a moose. I believe you. Now, now, do you ever use your antlers to fight? Sure. We'll use our antlers against a wolf or a mountain lion. But uh, most of the time, we use our antlers against each other. Two male moose might be fighting over the same female or trying to decide which moose is the leader of the pack. Now, is that what these moose are doing? That's right. See how they lock antlers and tussle, yeah. trying to push each other back and forth? Mm -hmm. That's the way they test their strength. It's like a tug of war or arm wrestling. And usually, it's pretty easy going. After a while, the moose who's not as strong will back away. Uh, but what happens if he doesn't back away? Oh, then things get messy. When you have two big male moose who are both that strong and who won't stop fighting each other, well, somebody's gonna get hurt. And believe me, these antlers can do a lot of damage. Well, I bet they can. But you don't do a lot of fighting, do you? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. Mm. We moose don't go looking for fights. We're peaceful creatures who just like to be left alone. We've got enough to do just looking for food to keep us strong and help our antlers grow. And sometimes you need to rest. That's right. And here's something I bet you didn't know. Moose are good swimmers. We can swim across a lake if we have to, and we can hold our breath for more than a minute. And you know what else? We love aquatic plants. Who's that? Aquatic plants, Stinky. It just means that they grow in the water, you know, kind of like seaweed. We moose love to eat them. 
Oh, I didn't know that. I told you. See, aquatic plants are filled with something called sodium, and moose need a lot of that. So whenever you see moose down by a lake, what are they looking for? Aquatic plants. <laughs> That's <laughs> right, Stinky. Oh, well, 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 thank you for coming and telling us all about antlers, Ralph. That's my pleasure. Uh, antlers can get in the way, but I wouldn't be without them. Oh, that reminds me of a song. <laughs> me too. Do you mind <laughs> if I sing? Go ahead. <laughs> and now here's Ralph with the moose song. I'm a moose, I'm the moose, in amongst the blotch and pine and spruce. What dead from my head, may end up over the mantelpiece instead. Oh, you've got to have some antlers if you want to be a moose. Once you started fighting and you want to call a truce, the other guy will look at these and say, it's just no use. You gotta have some antlers if you wanna be a moose. But there you go. All at once my age begins to show. Velvet skin gets kinda thin. Hang you there like curtains on the ring. Oh, you've got to have some antlers if you wanna be a moose. Once you started fighting and you wanna call a truce. The other guy will look at these and say, it's just no use. You gotta have some amplers if you wanna be a moose. Great song, Ralph. Thank you. And now let's find out who won today's Animal Award. It's time for Animal Awards. Today we find out which of these animals is the largest North American herbivore. Her herbivore what? Herbivore. It means these animals only eat plants. They do not eat meat. I know that. Is it the prairie dog? Hmm, is it the moose? Or could it be the caribou? And the winner for largest North American herbivore is the moose. As Ralph just told us, moose eat up to 20 pounds of plants a day. Wow, way to go there, Ralphie boy. Today we have a story about hats. Uh, no, not about hats. Uh, antlers. Uh, no. Horns? <laughs> no, it's not about antlers, horns, or hats. It's right. about Hemsbach. Oh, Hemsbach who wear hats. Oh, stinky. Oh. <laughs> Once upon a time, there were a bunch of Hemsbach who lived in a place where there was hardly any food. Now, one day, some humans came in machines on wheels. They chased the Hemsbach. What's going on, said the Hemsbach. And they ran as fast as they the humans finally caught up with Huxley Hemsbach and grabbed him by the tail. They put him on the machine and carried him away. Poor Huxley didn't know what was happening. He wanted to run, not ride on a machine. Where are you taking me, he said. But the humans didn't understand Hemsbach language. They led Huxley gently by the horns and put him in a cage with a lot of his friends. What are they doing to us, cried Huxley. Calm down, Huxley, said his friend Hubbard Hemsbach. We're just being moved. And before Huxley knew it, he had been taken to a wonderful new place that had lots of food and lots of room for him and his friends. And so they lived happily ever after. The end. Oh, that was a good story, Jake. Uh, and listen, I want you to know I'm sorry about being such a pest about the hat. Oh, uh, then you don't want a hat. I wouldn't say that. Well, what would you say? I want a hat! I want a hat! I want a hat! Hello, everyone. It's habitat time again. And today, we're going to... Bula Bula. Bula Bula. No, we're not going to Bula Bula. No. We're going through that door. I'm not going through that door. What did you say, Armstrong? You heard me. You heard what I said. I said I'm not going through that door and nobody can make me. Oh, but Armstrong, today we're going to a North American forest. Mm -mm, I don't care. I'm not moving. No. Oh, all right. I'll go by myself. Okay, bye. bye. Oh, my. Is that a cute little chicken hawk I see? What? Where, 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 where? Oh, where, where? that tree. Where well, I don't see no... Oh, no! Oh. Hey! My mistake. That's not a chicken hawk. What are you talking about? See? Isn't this great? 
Yeah, it looks dangerous to me. There's nothing dangerous here. Hey, yeah, uh, maybe you're right. Look at that cute bird. That's a woodpecker. She seems more interested in that tree than in us. Oh, there she goes. Oh. Oh, danger, danger. Get me out of here. Armstrong, that's a chipmunk. It's perfectly harmless. Chipmunks live in North American forests and eat nuts and seeds. Well, uh, what else lives in these trees here? All kinds of things. Just stay still and watch. Ooh, what's that? A spotted owl. Oh, and am I glad we spotted it? Hubba, hubba. Better my dreams. Armstrong, control yourself. Oh, mm -hmm. oh and there's a little wood mouse. Oh, what? Uh, hey, wood mouse. You know, if I were you, I'd get out of here before that owl sees you because you know what'll happen. Um, oops. Eh, too late. Oh, well. Birds gotta eat. Especially a nice looking bird like that. Owls do eat small mammals and small birds, so that wood mouse was definitely on the menu. Hmm. Hey, Bunny, what's that? It's a plant. Not the plant, that. Oh, oh, that. That's a mountain lion, also called a cougar or a puma. What's it doing here? She lives here, Armstrong, and it looks like she's checking out her territory. I thought you said there wasn't anything dangerous here in the North American forest. Well, I guess I forgot about the mountain lion. Uh. They're found throughout the Americas, from Alaska down to the Andes. And don't worry, if we don't bother her, she won't bother us. Well, uh, let's not be a bother, huh? Let's get out of here now. Okay, Armstrong, if you insist. I insist, I insist, I insist. Yeah, ready. Here we are. For habitat time, it's Bunny Bear. And I'm showing the chicken hog. Just back from a North American forest. Yeah, and I'm never going anywhere ever again. Bula Bula. I want a hat. Here comes oh, I Stinky and hat. Jake. Oh, I want no, a hat. No, no. Oh, Jake, I guess you haven't told Stinky about the surprise. Huh? Wait, what, what surprise? What uh, surprise? Uh, never mind, didn't say a thing. Time uh, for the quiz, yeah, and nothing. here it is. Then the question is, which of these animals makes this sound? The lion, the elephant seal, the hippo, or the toad? Give it a think. I'll be back in a buzz. What surprise? Nothing. Nothing. Now, do you know which of those animals makes this sound? What surprise? <laughs> no, that's not the answer. Let's ask Tizzy. <laughs> and the answer is the hippo. That's the animal which makes this sound. Believe it, cause it's true. Thanks, Tizzy, for a swell quiz. What surprise? Just a second. And thanks to today's special guests, Dikembe the Hemsbach and Ralph the Moose. Thank you, Stinky. Thank you, Jake. <laughs> and there you go. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Jake, you What's going on around right here? This is part of the surprise. Now kneel down. Yeah, okay. Yeah, go Close ahead. your little eyes. We welcome you as the newest member of the Bula Bula Club. Oh, yeah. oh, oh my that. goodness, I'm my own, I've got my own hat. <laughs> yeah. 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 Who turned out the light? Oh. <laughs> Until next time, keep seeing the world through the eyes of animals. Oh. Bye. <laughs>